Hi, I'm Zibby Owens, and you're listening to the award-winning podcast, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. If you like this podcast, you will love my new anthology called Moms Don't Have Time to Have Kids. Check it out, and you'll hear from 49 authors about all sorts of things moms don't have time to do. All the authors have been on this podcast. Also, check out my TikTok, at with Zibby and Tracy, my other podcast, Sex Talk with Zibby and Tracy. Check out Moms Don't Have Time to Write on Medium. And of course, my new publishing company called Zibby Books. And now back to our daily author interview site and a quick hello from some of my kids. Hi. Hi. Hello. Enjoy the show. Jenny Nash is the author of Blueprint for a Book, Build Your Novel from the Inside Out. Jenny is the founder and CEO of Author Accelerator, a company on a mission to lead the emerging book coaching industry. Author Accelerator has trained 100 book coaches in both fiction and nonfiction through their book coach certification program. Jenny's own book coaching clients have landed top New York agents and six-figure book deals and earned spots on the New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller lists. Jenny is the author of 10 books in three genres. The most recent is Blueprint for a Book, Build Your Novel from the Inside Out. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books to discuss Blueprint for a Book, Build Your Novel from the Inside Out. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I was just saying before we started, this is such a full circle moment for me because you helped me when I was trying to write a book, which is now being published in one form or another as bookends, but then it was in a completely different iteration or pretty different. <laughs> and I remember so much. I think about these questions that you have in here as, as part of the 14 questions, particularly what would you put on the jacket flap? Because I remember at the time you asked me to write the jacket flap for one novel or something that I was working on. And I was like, oh, I wouldn't want to read that book. So I was like, I better not write, I better not write that book. So anyway, tell listeners a little bit about what this, what your blueprint model is and how you became a book coach. I want to hear the whole thing. Well, you just encapsulated actually perfectly what my whole philosophy about writing is, which is you have to know what you're writing, why you're writing it, who you're writing it for. Like you have to know those deep level questions before you can write something that's going to hold together. And sometimes that process of discovery, you know, like people are called to write. You you have been called to write your whole life. And, <laughs> and oftentimes it comes from being a reader and being so touched by the books that we read and wanting to be that for somebody else, like wanting to be in the mix in the game, right? And and so there's this call, there's this burn, this there's this yearning. And maybe you have, maybe you have a story, but but what I found is that creative people have a thousand stories. Right? They have so many things that they could write or that they want to write. And so oftentimes it's it's what should I work on or what you know is the thing to focus upon or is this book right or good enough or should I bother or should I put the time in all those questions and too often the way we teach writing is we leap to craft and craft is about how do you write a scene how do you develop a character how do you write dialogue how do you develop a plot like all those questions which you have to answer at some point but you shouldn't answer them at the beginning <laughs> And, and what I have found in my career as a book coach is that you can write your way to the answer. 100% you can write your way to the answer. You've done it. I've done it. Famous people have done it. It just is really inefficient and frustrating. <laughs> so my, my whole philosophy encapsulated in the blueprint for a book is take a little bit of time before you write or if you're stuck to figure out these fundamental questions, this blueprint for your book. And it's going to unlock everything. It's going to make everything easier. It's going to, I mean, writing is never easy. There's no magic solution, but it's going to make it easier. It's going to make it more efficient. It's going to make you more confident. And that is an idea I've staked my whole career (laughs) on. (laughs) So it better work. <laughs> yeah. You had case studies in here from Carla Nomberg and KJ Del Antonio, both who have written for my most recent anthology, Moms Never Time to Have Kids, and have been on my podcast and whose books I love. And I just was it was so neat to see all of their things sort of excerpted in this scene and that scene and have it analyzed by you. Yeah, they I mean, I'm so fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with just amazing writers. I I was a writer for a long time. It's what I thought I wanted to be in my life. And and I I did the whole thing. I had a three book deal at Penguin. I 
you know, I was a really firmly mid-list writer, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's kind of, kind of not the place you want to be. <laughs> sounds like and, better than bottom of the list or not I mean, on the, or better than not on the list at all. I mean, yes. And there, and there is a certain thing to that for people who are just trying to get started or get their first book or what have you, that that is what you want. That is where you want to be. But I was sort of stuck there and, and I was trying to make a real career of it and of being a writer. And, and in that midless place, you kind of can't because you're not really making enough money. You're not really, you know, it's very unstable and insecure, you know, so I knew I was good at this. I knew I liked this and I accidentally stumbled into book coaching when I was, I was teaching at UCLA in the adult education writers program, which is an incredible program. They offer, you know, it's LA. So there's TV sitcom writing and movie writing and, and also book writing. And I was teaching. I I took a class there, you know, you did. I did. Yeah. After college, when I had just moved to LA and I wanted to keep writing and like meet other people who love to write, I took a personal essay class there. And now my husband, whenever we drive by, he's like, Oh, it's your alma mater. And I'm like, it's (laughs) not my alma mater. I just took one class. (laughs) Anyway. Well, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it's, there's so many places to learn how to write and and it was a great program. And I, I developed a bit of a reputation there as being very market focused. And I think that that was because of where I was in my own career was like, you got to sell, you got to write things that are going to sell. And, and that doesn't mean writing to the market. It, I still believe you should write what you're called to write and what's in your heart to write. But, but I, I was teaching a lot of memoir and and so my whole mantra was, you know, you can you can write your story all day long if it is something you want to do or it feels good or it's fun or it's therapeutic or all that. But as soon as you start thinking about, I want readers, I want a book deal, I want an agent, I want all the things, you better start thinking about your reader and who they are and what they want and what they need. And so I, I kind of developed this reputation and one of my colleagues approached me she was an agent and she was an incredible story analyst and she wanted to write a book for writers and she had never written a book. And she said, will you take me all the way through? Will you, will you help me plan it, write it, pitch it, you know, do all the things. And it wasn't, she wasn't looking for a ghostwriter. She was looking for a guide and, and a cheerleader and, you know, all of those other intangible things. And, and I had never done it before, but I was just itching. And I said, oh my gosh, that sounds like exactly what I want to do. The constraints of teaching in a, you know, a six-week course, probably the kind of course you took, an eight-week mm-hmm. course, a 10-week course. Was yours 10? This was like in 1998 <laughs> or 1999 or something. So I don't even know. It was, it couldn't have been more than six or I don't know, somewhere between six and 10 weeks, I would say. It's a very frustrating process for the instructor and the writer because the writer wants more attention on their words. The instructor can't give it. It's so frustrating. And, and writing is so, there's patterns to it. There's things we all do. There's, there's universal things about creativity, but it's so unique that the words on the page are so unique to you. And what you want is somebody paying attention to your words and, so I, I did that with this with this writer and developed the processes and systems that I still use today. They're they're much refined now, but that writer turned out to be Lisa Cron, and her book Wired for Story became massively popular in the writing world. And the follow up book that I also helped her with, Story Genius, also just they, they've become foundational texts for a lot of people. She's she's just brilliant at analyzing story, and. At, at that point, I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. I don't I don't want to make the fight to be a writer. I think I'm a better book coach than I am a writer. And so I I shifted my whole my whole career to helping to helping other people and helping other writers. And and it's it's just been a, a thrill. I just love it. So if people are listening and they're thinking to themselves, how do I know if I need a book coach? Maybe like w- at what stage do you, is the best time to get a book coach? Is it after you've written it? Is it as you're getting started? Does a book coach edit or just provide general feedback? 
take it from Yeah. So everybody generally knows what an editor does. An editor comes in after the work is finished and and goes through it and tells you how to make it better. That that might be called a developmental edit. And anybody who's ever been edited usually adores the process because it's amazing. (laughs) It's usually the first time you've had somebody paying that really close attention to your words. It's such a privilege and a gift to be to be edited by a great editor. And, and a book coach comes in earlier in the process usually and sticks with you through it. So rather than, oh, here's this thing and I'm done when you look at it, it's in a perfect world, it's here's this idea, I'm noodling, I want to I wanna get it right. And, and a book coach is going to be like a personal trainer. They're going to keep you accountable they're going to give you deadlines. They're going to give you feedback in almost real time. I give my clients feedback within 48 hours. So you've got that feedback and it's editorial feedback, just like an editor would give. Different book coaches have different levels of, of input, but, but you're going to get that editorial feedback, that accountability. And then critically, the emotional support, you know very well. <laughs> writing has, it has ups and downs. You, you know, you fall into despair and doubt. You, good things happen, bad things happen. And, and there's no, there's usually nobody that really understands that in your life, the way that a a book coach can, we, we're just in it, in the creative process with our clients. So your question was, when would somebody best use it? I mean, I wish that most writers would start with some kind of professional help on their books. Most people don't. They they start to write and they usually complete a full draft, which is like a year of their time, at least, usually many more. And, and there, if there's flaws baked into it, all they've done is just deepen those flaws. And sometimes the flaws are, they're not unfixable. And so, you know, then they go out to pitch it and they know they can write, they know they have a good story, but they, they're they not getting traction and they don't know why. And that's usually the time people come to a book coach is when all, all other doors have been shut. And it, it's very painful because it's so late. And, you know, then what we're doing is saying there's this fundamental thing that's not working and, and there's evidence. It's not, this is not a opinion, you know, it's like, it's evidence here in the pages for why this isn't holding together or why, why it's not working. And it's just, it's really hard news to deliver. So in a perfect world, I would say get help at the very beginning. And that's what the blueprint that I wrote about is, is make sure it's solid at the beginning and then, and then write forward. And maybe you don't feel that you need help or you, you feel good and confident and sure at that point. But I just think that can make all the difference in the whole world. I feel like book coaches are like doulas. Right. You're kind of totally. like a doula rather than the OB who's delivering the book. Right. Totally. Totally. <laughs> like you cut, you're along the way, you hold the hand, you make sure it's all set up for success and you get it all the way to the finish line. Yeah. And and <laughs> you're, you're a publisher now. And what you're doing with your new venture is actually addressing an extremely similar problem to what book coaches address at a different stage of the process. But but it's this idea of, of nurturing and that's gotten so squeezed out of publishing. And, you know, for all the reasons, life is moves fast. Publishing has changed. People are really risk averse in publishing. Now they want the next big sure hit. They want, you know, celebrity things or Instagram influencer things. And the, the days of a writer being, supported through maybe a book not doing well, or maybe a small first book, or maybe a, you know, a career takes a really long time to build. And, and that, that nurturing is what I, I felt had gone missing. And, and I had a taste of it in my, in my time as a writer, I, I really had a taste of it and there's just nothing like it. Having somebody sending your chapters, waiting for them, giving you that feedback, encouraging you, believing in you, 
you know, that, that nurturing. And so I'm just thrilled to see what you're doing. Cause again, it's at a different stage. It's like, okay, these writers have finished manuscripts that are ready to be published. They need nurturing too. That part of the process is incredibly intense and there's so many skills you need at that part of the process. And so, so what you're doing is, is that for that stage. And what a book coach is doing is before you even get to that stage, you could have nurturing as well. <laughs> well, I, I feel like we should probably, you know, partner on more projects because a number of things we're doing are memoirs that are about to be written. Or I'm like, I want you to write a memoir. What do you think? Or, you know, so it's, it is very, very similar. They just know where it's going to end up versus doing it sort of on spec, if you will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the, what I, what I really like about your model, which is similar to our model, is that a writer is this idea that you're going to get plucked out of what used to be called the slush pile. You're going to get plucked out of the slush pile and like a fairy godmother is going to wave a wand and make you a, a best-selling writer. There's that very pervasive myth <laughs> out there and it just doesn't happen like that. It's so much work and it's so much, it's, it's a, you know, this idea we see, we see writers that we've never heard of maybe, or writers that we love who have a new book, you know, like Jody Picot just had a new book come out and, mm -hmm. and you think, oh, there's the book, like, yay, a new Jody Picot book. And like, she worked so hard on that for years. Maybe she's been thinking it for, you know, who knows how long and, and what it takes for a person like that to bring that forth and to make that to get that into our hands. Like it is so much. Well, actually, goes, if you want to know, you can listen to my podcast with her and she talks all about that. <laughs> I missed that one. Did yeah, you just yeah. talk to her? Yeah, I talked to her. I don't know. In the last couple of months. Yeah, right around when her book came out. I don't know. Well, in since the, you do yeah. 400 podcasts <laughs> a year. I know. I know. I'm trying to slow down. I really am. It's just but, right. So it's that that there there is no magic wand. It's just a lot of really hard work. And and at every stage. And so I, I like to, I like the model that's a little bit more of the startup model, the entrepreneurial model that, that a writer is bringing a product into the world and they are need to do all the things that, that the entrepreneur would do, which is who's my audience? Who's going to buy this? How is it going to get into their hands? What do I need to do? What skills do I need? Do I need to partner with people? You know, all these questions, but it's much more intentional than, oh, pick me, please pick me. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to be picked. I want to be plucked out. I want to be anointed. And, you know, so I'm all about the hard work <laughs> and I'm all about if it's going to be hard work and you, you need support, align yourself with whoever can give you that support and, and be intentional that, that that's what you're aiming for. And that's your goal. And that's what you want ra rather than the sort of nobody's choosing me and woe is me. <laughs> no, it's very true. No, having been on the sort of losing side of the equation or the aspiring side, and now on this side, like acquiring and evaluating manuscripts, there's, it's just like, it's a very obviously different, different process. And the books that come in through the slush pile, if you will, the main thing there is they are not usually, and I shouldn't say always, but the books that come in from agents have been tightened up and edited and a lot of the problems are gone and they're formatted and there are no typos. And and I mean, some of the unagented are, are, are really great, just maybe not right for us. But I would say in general, if I could make sweeping statements, it's easier to read. It's It's easier as a publisher to to evaluate some of the more polished submissions, whether it's agented or not, because that's a more of a, you know, you have to evaluate how many resources does your publisher really have, right? The, the publisher, do they have time? Do they have time to be editing? And different publishers have different amounts of that available to their authors. But I don't know, I used to get the advice like, from you and other people and everything, like, make sure it's all polished. I'm like, no, I'm just going to send another proposal. <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to try again. <laughs> and I heard, I've heard you tell that story about your own book of, of realizing that you had, had sent it out when it wasn't really ready. And, you know, you probably know now agents know this, publishers know this, book coaches know this, 
if we see a writer and they're and they're in despair, like why why is my book not getting traction? Why is it not getting chosen? Why is it not getting picked up? Why is it not uh, getting offers? And and we look at it and it doesn't take very long to see why that mm-hmm. you know there are there are evidence based reasons and and it's not totally subjective that you know and and it's just I just hate to see that heartbreak in the writers where. They think that it's them. They think, oh, I must not be good at this, or I must not be a good storyteller. I must, maybe my story's not good, or maybe I can't write, or whatever that thing in their head is. And it's usually not that. It's usually that they just haven't had the the, the nurturing or the, you know, why should you, why should you believe? Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus because we all just do the best we can with what we have and what we know. But when I was teaching at UCLA, there was this really frustrating type of student and, and they would have been in the, this is adult education. So they would have been in the program for like 10 years, taking every class under the sun. And they would come into my class and, and I had amazing colleagues and they would say, oh, I've taken Lisa's class and Barbara's class and Monica's class and all the classes. And, and you're like, wow, they're really putting some effort into to this. And then you would see their work and it just wasn't, it wasn't holding together. It was that idea of, they thought that they were working hard, but they were, they were just taking piecemeal craft classes a little bit at a time. And you can, you can learn some things that way, but the, you know, a book is its own thing. It's a long, complex intellectual work of art and, and you can't really learn it six weeks at a time. (laughs) I mean, that's, so it was just very frustrating to, to teach in that sort of a, a program and to see what the writers were trying to accomplish, but but just not going about it in the in the right way it was hard. And now you train and have a whole team of book accelerators, book coaches. Do you teach you do teach classes, right? So tell me how you've expanded this whole thing. Yeah. So after I began to to coach my own self, my career really took off. I had some just really great early successes of uh, my, my clients after Lisa Kron's two book deal. I had a client get a deal at Simon and Schuster. I had a number, another one, get a deal at Scribner. And it was like, Oh, my process really <laughs> works. And I, and I began to have more work than I could do my own self. And I, I started a company called author accelerator to train other people, how to, to be book coaches. And we we have a certification program. We've certified 94 book coaches, um, mostly in fiction. We just started certifying in nonfiction this year. So we have about 15 so far in, in nonfiction. And the, the certification program is very rigorous. It takes people about nine months. You have to work with clients. You have to record your coaching sessions. We're really looking for the the editorial chops, but also the, the compassion and the project management, how, how you can move a writer forward. And so now we have this really robust community of, of book coaches and, and we would like to be a leader of this new industry. It's, it's super new. It's, it's only really come up in the last probably five years as a real thing, just as the changes in publishing have, have gone down and, so I just, I'm just in this incredible place where I get to, I get to teach others how to do this. And there's like being an agent just to take another role in publishing. You can't go to school to be an agent. It's a thing. It's an apprentice situation where you oftentimes start out as an intern at an agency and you work your way up and you, you you work way, your way to having your own projects and you're usually being mentored by by somebody who's more seasoned than you and the same is true for for being an editor you know you you learn as you do it it's it's not you can't really go to school and get a degree in it and the same is is true for for book coaching so we're just trying to provide that that guidance and mentorship to to folks and 
the people who are coming in to be book coaches are, it just makes me smile because they're 98% women. They're 33% of them have advanced degrees, incredibly educated people who have not really found found a place in corporate America, I would say. So a lot of English majors, history majors, philosophy majors. We have some outlier uh, anthropology, geography kind of people and a lot of moms, huge number of, of moms. And, you know, it's people looking for work that they can do that's satisfying, that they can do from home, that they can control, that that feels good in the world right now. And that's going to make them some money. And so just the the opportunity to empower other other women and teach them how to do this thing and and see them I mean you can tell that I just I just love I just love what I do it's it's like you Zibby to be to spend my days immersed in people's stories and in the creative process and and the types of people that bring it forth and the it just feels good right It just feels like win, win, win all around. And it's just an enormous privilege to, to have this be my world. And then to, we have some, we have some coaches who I really urge people to focus very narrowly on who they want to help. You know, we think of writers, it's just, it's like a monolithic block of people and, and we have coaches who are are choosing to help really specific groups of writers. Like I was speaking to someone yesterday who's a veteran and she wants to, to focus only on helping veterans tell their stories. We have a, a woman who's, I just smile because her story is incredible. She was married for 35 years and then discovered that she really was gay. And so her mission is to help folks in the LGBTQ plus community not necessarily tell their stories, but just to write. And we have folks focusing on social justice. We have folks focusing on speculative fiction, you know, just all over the map. And it's just rich and good and awesome. And I love it. Okay, wait. (laughs) So if somebody wants to find one of these people, what is the process like? Do they sign up on your site and you assign them? Can they just pick which coach? Where do they go? How soon can they sign up? You can sign up today. Uh, You can go to authoraccelerator.com. We have a matching matching process and it's a $25 fee because it's an actual person who does this work. And we, we have a really intense intake questionnaire where we ask about your project. We ask about your goals. We ask about your history as a writer, what you're hoping to achieve, what kind of style you like. Some people want a lot of patience and handholding. Some people are on a deadline with a publisher and they just want to crank it out and they want some tough love, you know, so we get a sense of what you're looking for. And, and then we will match you with the writer that we think is a really good fit. And it's, we do this very intentionally that way. I never wanted to have a marketplace where you could come and you could pick and choose who you want to work with even though that sounds like a good idea, what tends to happen is people tend to focus on the wrong things that they want. They, It's like, oh, look, here's a book coach at Author Accelerator who's a USA Today bestselling novelist. I want to work with that person. And it's like, well, that person actually isn't a very good fit for you because what you really need is all these things over here. And so our having this really high touch matching service it tends to result in incredibly magical connections. And oftentimes the connections are not the most obvious thing. And we, we really pride ourselves on, on making that, that good match and, and it, it works really, really well. So we're going to stick, stick with that process, but so yeah, people can go to authoraccelerator.com to be matched. And if they're interested in becoming a book coach, there's a way to get the info on that site there as well. And I didn't mean for this to turn into just like a giant advertisement. For no, but I'm I actually, I, I feel like this, there's so many people who are interested in becoming published authors and don't know where to turn to. I get emails like this all the time. What should I do? And I, what I should have been doing is, well, now I'm going to go back in and just be like, 
talk to Jenny Nash, go to Author Accelerator and find somebody. What I usually say is, yeah, try to find somebody to help you with your book at this stage or a freelance editor or somebody like that who can take the time with you. But yeah, sorry about that missed opportunity. But anyway, I'm, so I'm really, <laughs> I'm really excited. And that's why I'm asking so many questions because this is such a valuable resource in helping writers become authors and achieving their dreams. So I don't know. I, I don't mean, I, I think it's really helpful. And no, thank I, you. I also I mean, find it fascinating. By the way, are, what is there, I don't want to like make this, is there like a price range generally, just so people have a, an inkling of of the lowest or the highest or if they can afford it or whatever, or if they want to pay for yeah. it? No, it's fine. I, 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 I like talking about money. I think it's important for, for writers to think about money and for coaches to talk about money and all of that. So one of the questions we ask on that intake form is, do you have a budget? So we can try to match you as somebody who can accommodate that, that budget, because we do have people, our coaches are self-employed, so they set their own rates and their own prices. And they, as I mentioned, they focus on their own thing, but the range, I mean, you could get feedback on a blueprint. So a blueprint would be, my book has 14 steps. You, you go through those steps and answer them. And some of our coaches have a package where you get feedback on those answers. And that might be as low as a few hundred dollars. And others have packages where they'll go back and forth with you on the blueprint for four or six weeks. You know, that's going to be maybe five or seven hundred dollars. Then if you were to work with somebody and say, I want you to take me all the way through the writing of this book, all the way through pitching and helping me with that, you know, now you're going to be looking at a, a six month or nine month investment with the monthly fee that might be anywhere from 600 a month, all the way up to 2,500 a month or more. I, I think, I think I'm one of the highest paid book coaches out there and I'm a lot more than those prices, but that that's for a very particular kind of writer who is ready to make a particular kind of investment, but there should be a budget for most most people that, and that's why I say, if you, if you only have a very small amount of money to spend, that getting that help at the very beginning is, is really important. And then the other thing I will say is to follow Author Accelerator on all social media, because our coaching students are required to work with three different writers at three different phases of the process. So on the fiction side or the memoir side, a coach helps somebody with a blueprint. They help somebody who has a finished manuscript to evaluate that manuscript. And they help somebody with a pitch strategy, a researching how the path to publishing that's best for them and, and how they could pitch that book. So every single one of our coaches, and we have about 300 students moving through our program right now, they all have to work with writers and many, many, many of them put out the call for students at those stages. And that is usually no cost. It's kind of like, I might be dating myself, but there used to be Vidal Sassoon used to have salons and you could go get your hair cut by the, an yeah, the yes, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. I totally remember that. And I think it was free. I can't remember, but I know I did it, but <laughs> it's it's kind of like that. And, and you can't, at the moment, you can't apply to, to have your work worked on by a student, but at Author Accelerator, we often, when our students put out the call for, for these writers that they need to work with, we'll often repost or amplify out those requests. So that's a possibility for, for somebody who can't who doesn't feel like they can afford anything. And do all of the people who go through your author accelerator program, do they have to do the blueprint? Like if you have the book written, do you have to go back and do a blueprint? And what if you just don't want to do the blueprint? Oh, no, absolutely not. You don't, you don't have to. There a lot of coaches have have things where they'll do a manuscript evaluation as a starting point. So I was focused on the blueprint. I don't know why, but a lot of, a lot of coaches, I, I mean, here's the thing that I teach my book coaches. 
I have systems and processes and tools. The blueprint is one of them. But there are many systems and processes and tools that are helpful. I mentioned Lisa Cron's Story Genius is a very particular method of writing. There's people, a lot of folks know the Save the Cat method or the Story Grid method. These are all great methods. And what I teach my coaches is you use whatever tool you need to help the writer. You Your job is to help the writer. It's not, I want to use Jenny's system or Jenny's process. I I teach you how to think about having a process and build that, but it's all about what that writer needs. So we're tool agnostic, I guess is what I should say. So our book coaches have to do these things to get certified, but once they're certified, they're going to do whatever they need to help the writer. And we have people that are certified in those other systems and methods and might bring those in. We have people who do everything. So that's why that intake is so important is people will say, this is where I am. I have a full draft and right, right. Okay. got right. feedback from wherever, and this is what they need. We'll match you with someone who, who will give you that. Or I just, I just need help. A lot of, a lot of times what people want help with is polishing, polishing their manuscript before they go to pitch. Because as you just said, there's a really big difference between a good manuscript and a great one. And we can help you make bridge that gap if that's what you need. So whatever whatever you need, we're going to meet you where you are. Wow, amazing! Yeah, this is great. This is so great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you you know now, right? You, I you know, know, I know. I think you know when we worked together, I got so discouraged because I couldn't see a way to f- in, use the input at the time, like to make it better. Right? Isn't that what happened? Like. Well, I yeah, think- and I, and I want to say something about that because I actually did the thing that no writer ever wants to hear to you, which which is I said I don't think you can write this book the way you've conceived it. I I think there's a fundamental thing missing, and and you and I so so I just believe in telling the truth. I believe in telling the truth, but but with. Comp- passion. And so many writers never hear the truth. That's the thing. They never hear that. And like, what is the truth? Was, was that my opinion? Well, of course there's part of it. That's my opinion, but, but there's that sense of what the market wants or is looking for, or just a knowledge about what gets, what gets picked up, what doesn't get picked up. And, you know, so I, I gave you that news, which was terrible to to tell you that. (laughs) It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) Like it's the worst part of being a book coach is, you know, to to have to tell somebody, I think this is not working and here's a reason why, and this is maybe what you need to do. And from the writer's perspective, sometimes you're open to hearing stuff. Sometimes you're not, sometimes you have to hear it 10 times from 10 different people. You know, it's just, you're in your process, you're in your journey, you're in your way. And, and hopefully what happens, which I know is what happened to you is you wrote the book you needed to write and that you wanted to write and that you're proud to write and that you're proud to bring into the world. And, you know, I'm sure I've just heard you talk about it a little bit that, that there's hundreds and hundreds of people that, that helped you along that, that path, whether it's a simple conversation or, you know, an intensive editor by your side or, or somebody one day telling you maybe this isn't the the right path, which, you know, was the tiny role that I played. (laughs) Well, it it ended up that, yeah, I didn't end up writing the book that ended up selling until I sold the proposal and wrote it with the editor at my publishing house, not my own, the one, you know, at Little Egg where who bought it. But had I not tried all those different iterations, I never would have ended up here. So yes, but I... You know, I, it didn't make me cry or anything. Like the feedback you gave was accurate, and I and what the book needed, I didn't want to give it. I didn't want to. There are elements of my life I don't particularly want to write about, so I had to rethink it, and that's fine. But thank God I didn't spend any more time on that. Yeah. Version. So I think it's all worthwhile. It was very yeah. worthwhile, and you know, I knew it before I even wrote that draft that it probably wouldn't make sense, but I still had to write it for me. So, and that's another thing that it's fine to do that. You know, sometimes the first draft or the second draft or the third draft is, you know, you have to get it off your chest. And, and that's why when people are like, oh, my first novel didn't sell or whatever, it's like, well, 
yeah, you, you experiment, you try, you test, you, you, what are the odds? And it's not because you're not a good writer. It's that you, it's a, it's a journey, I guess, but you know this more than anybody. So. <laughs> well, and, and what you just described is what, what you're doing with your business. What I'm doing with my business is you try, you test, you do it again. You, you know, the, the product that is going to hit the shelves that people are going to love and talk about and, and buy might not be that first widget you make, you know, it's just that with a book, the widget is, it takes years. <laughs> right. So, but I, I think, I think basically it's that we invest in authors the same way you do. We invest in the author and the books you can improve books. You can refocus and structure and books can shift, but you can't change the person. Like if you love a person and you love the way they write, you can work with them to write something amazing. But well, it, that's, that's a powerful, powerful position that you're taking and that you're, I, 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 I think, mean, I hope so. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I think what you're doing is going back to, to the way, you know, we romanticize the past a lot of times, but you know, that Maxwell Perkins, I've read, read a lot about his work with Hemingway and Fitzgerald. And there's a woman named Ursula Nordstrom, who was a children's book editor who worked with like E.B. White and Maurice Sendak and even um, Laura Ingalls Wilder, like just incredible writers. And you read about those editors and the work that they did and the, the, the relationship that they had with those writers. And I mean, I just, I just swoon and I think, oh, wouldn't that be amazing? You know, those editors were involved in those writers' lives. They were loaning them money. They were you know, writing them these incredible letters of encouragement. They were saying, send me a page at a time, you know, that just intense investment in them. And I say we romanticize the past. You know, there were a lot of people who couldn't get through the door as a writer back in the day, particularly women, particularly minorities, people of color, you know, so that's not so great. And I think, I hope things are changing for the for the better. But that one aspect, that nurturing aspect I think, I think was real based on what I've read and seen. And it feels like what you're doing is going back to that, which is, I just think beautiful and, <laughs> and writers need it. And, and we're, we're trying to, to be the first part of that process before you get to the publisher, the nurturing that, that you need and that results in powerful work. Excellent. Well, I'm definitely looking to you as a pipeline for books and manuscripts to come. So make sure that you're, when you finish whipping books into shape, you have them send them to us. <laughs> well, we will. We'd be delighted to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for letting me talk about book coaching and author accelerator and all the things. I think it's really important. And if anybody listening is interested, reach out and yeah, mention that you heard it here or that I recommended you just so that Jenny knows I'm sending good people her way. <laughs> yes, please do. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, Jenny, thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Also sign up for my newsletter at ZibbyOwens.com and sign up for my virtual book club and meet lots of authors on Zoom every other week. Thanks so much to Steve and Ryan at Texture Sound for the sound editing. And thank you to Morning Moon Productions for providing this fantastic intro and outro music.